Okay, well, welcome back to my YouTube channel once again. On this episode today, I want to teach you how to make a really good loaf of sourdough bread. But first things first, what if you don't have any sourdough? What I'd like to do is to teach you how to capture your, your sourdough, if you will. Um, sourdough, first, let's understand what sourdough is. Sourdough is nothing more than wild yeast. It is all around us. You ever seen those videos on YouTube where the squirrel is getting drunk off of some rotted apples? That's nothing more than wild yeast fermenting that rotten apple into alcohol. So basically, all around us is wild yeast. We capture that, have it growing inside of flour in our fridge or whatever, and we get it out and we feed it every once in a while. But believe it or not, it's right there. This is um, winter wheat, so, so a soft winter wheat, ground down, turns into flour. Now this is all-purpose flour um, from a bag, so they're really probably, this is processed down too far, but they've probably killed it. However, in this organic wheat, all of what you need is right in this cup. So all we basically have to do is grind this down into flour, mix it with some water. I do add some some flour to thicken it up, but once we get that done, within a couple days, it'll start to grow. So right, let's so do that. Let's part. see. I just have a spot underneath there to catch that. Okay. Well, time to go in. That was pretty nasty out there. So all we want to do, this is the, the wheat that we just ground up. And we're just going to put this in a bowl. And that's just tap water, nothing special. If you have city water, if it has too much chlorine in it, don't use it. But other than that, just use water, doesn't matter. And I'm just going to mix this up uh, to almost kind of a cream of wheat or an oatmeal consistency. And you'll almost notice it start to bubble right away. And I am just going to put a little bit of flour in there to thicken it. Just a little bit. I've heard of people peeling potatoes, keeping those peelings right beside this bowl in a bowl of water because the wild yeast that's on the potato skins will then get into the air and get into your bowl. And, and I'm not going to say that's not true because again, it's just wild yeast. It's all around us. All we're going to do now is just cover it up and leave it alone. I'll check back on it in a day or so. Um, and we'll finish this video when it's ready. Welcome back. This has been sitting for 24 hours um, and just covered up with a bowl. Okay, so as you can see, there's just little air bubbles coming to the surface. That is your sourdough starting to develop. So the only thing we're going to do for today is add just a little bit more flour to it. Again, this is just regular all-purpose flour, nothing special, and we're going to add some more water to it. And we're going to mix it in, and you're going to start to see this excel so much faster now. As a matter of fact, often after this step, it'll just overflow onto the table. So just mix that in there. That's it. We're just going to cover it up. Back. Leave it alone. Um, we are now on day number three, and our sourdough has finally come to life. I mean, it really is showing activity in there now. Uh, bubbles just kind of all over the place, and if you can see through the, let me bring it over closer for you. You can see the top of it really come to life, and if you can see through the side of the container, it's just completely full of air bubbles. So. That is indeed the sourdough 
or the wild yeast turning into turning into sourdough. So now it's time to separate that. We're going to divide it in half and we're going to feed it again and we're going to give it some more time to see what it does. Chances are this time it's really going to explode. So it's going to take off and after today we'll be ready to bake. So this weekend I'll put together a loaf of bread. Now after this first process you don't have to do this part of it anymore. This can be skipped right past and you're only talking a day or so to pull this out of the refrigerator and bring it back to life again. We started this one from scratch. So it takes almost a week to get one going from scratch. So, but if you think about our pioneers and our ancestors, they didn't have a place to go buy a loaf of bread often. So their, their sourdough come from nature, it come from the wild, and that's exactly where this one came from. So anyway, let's, uh, Go ahead and get that separated out and get some more flour stirred up in there and then we'll go from there. I'm just going to dump about half of that in here. You could just give that to a friend. Or you could just dispose of it. I'm just going to put it aside for now. Good enough. Now we just leave it alone. Okay, so finally, finally we're here. Um, boy, I have to tell you, this has been a struggle for me. Not making the sourdough, this cold, this sickness, this sinus thing that my mom had right before I started shooting this video. Matter of fact, her and I did a video together. Um, I wasn't sick yet. She was pretty sick and I spent a lot of time there with her. I caught it. And boy, let me tell you what, even just trying to make the sourdough, which is done now, and man, does it smell delicious. Um, just trying to get that sourdough started and going um, really wiped me out. I mean, I literally could only throw the Frisbee for the dog, say, two or three times before I had to come in and lay down for two hours. I mean, it was horrible. Um, but anyway, the great thing about sourdough um, is that it is so forgiving. Um, this can live on the counter for weeks and it'll start to go dormant. And as soon as you add a little bit of flour back to it and give it something to eat it'll just come right back to life again and hence that's where it gets its name sourdough from because the longer this sits on the counter and the more you have to feed it the more age it gets the more flavor it gets you've got to be careful though because <laughs> it can actually have too much flavor for some people so today we are making a loaf of my mom's bread we're going to use actually the same recipe from my um from my mom's recipe from the way she makes bread the only thing we're going to do different is we're going to substitute the the yeast that she uses for bread. We're going to substitute sourdough starter. Um, so now let's just go there a second. That's all this is. That's all sourdough is, is a leavening agent. It's just a way to make bread rise. It's a little bit slower. It's the traditional way. Um, before they started manufacturing um, different sodas or different um, types of leavening agents to push different kinds of bread up, there was the natural sourdough, which is just wild yeast that lives all around each and every one of us. I don't care where you are in this world, there's wild yeast around you. So that's basically all this is. Captured, kept, um, fed. I like to think of it like a little ant farm. So this is my little ant farm. Um, so today we're going to use, I've got to cut everything laid out in front of me. I'm just going to, I don't need all of this. This is way more. This could be used for making pancakes, waffles. I mean, you could just use this for so much stuff. So let's just get busy, get this mixed up. Again, once it's all mixed up, it's going to have to sit for a while to give it time to rise. Now, if you want a really, 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 really good loaf of bread, 
put it in the refrigerator. Don't, don't try to rush it to make it come up. Put it in the refrigerator, leave it in there for a day, a day and a half too max, but, but if you leave it in there for a while and give that yeast time to work its way through the entire loaf and multiply and age, you'll get a loaf of bread that tastes so much different than if you just let this thing rise today and cook it. Now, this sourdough has been on the table now for more than a week. So this, this video process has taken me more than a week, but that's okay because the yeast is really smelling wonderful. So it's gonna be a great loaf of bread. So let's just get busy, put it together. I'll kind of give you the ingredients that I'm gonna put in it. The one thing is the water. I've got it measured out at a cup and a third. I'm using a wooden bowl. I have flour that I scooped with a cup. Um, if you know anything about flour, depending on how you take that scoop, you can, you can have a cup and a third in each cup. So that water could vary a lot. How much moisture is in your actual sourdough starter? Um, all of those things work into how much water you need. So I'm gonna stress, use the amount of water that you need. I might tell you a cup and a third, but depending on humidity, depending on temperature, depending on how much flour you actually have, um, that could vary either direction. So depending on how moist you want your loaf of bread, depending on, I mean, there's so many variables. Kind of get used to feeling the way it feels under your hand and you use the amount of water that you need. Anyway, let's just get to it. I'm gonna start out with my flour. I got sugar, I have two and a half tablespoons of sugar. I'm gonna go ahead, let's put the salt in next. I've just got a teaspoon of salt. And again, this, this so much doesn't matter. I'm, I'm really good with just grabbing these ingredients and throwing them in a bowl and calling it a loaf of bread. So uh, if, you, if you like a little more salt, a little less salt, put a little less, I don't care. It doesn't, it honestly doesn't matter. There's so many, you go to the bookstore and look at the, the books telling you how to bake bread and they're this tall and they're all just variances a little bit. So you just put what you think you need. Okay, lard, shortening, same thing. Two and a half, two and a half tablespoons. Let's just get that stuff dry mixed in first. Okay, now for the yeast. Mm. Look at that, how light and fluffy and airy. And again, that's just wild yeast. That's plenty. The rest of that I could put in the fridge. I could do just whatever I wanted to do with it. And then I'm not, because that was kind of wet, I'm definitely not going to add all this water. I can add some as I need it. In my bread bowls, thank you, Becky, uh, one of my classmates from the 90s um, dropped these off. These were her grandmother's bowls. And so much of my stuff from here just, it came from just everywhere. People um, sort of saw what I was doing and they wanted to be a part of it. So they, the lanterns, the, I mean, just everything. People just saw what I was doing and had something laying at their house and they're like, oh, that would look so nice in your house. Will you, will you take this and just use it whenever you can? And this is even before the YouTube channel. So um, anyway, that's where the bowls come from. I didn't pay a penny for any of them. They were just part of, um, they were in a box in her basement and, and she wanted me to have them here at the cabin and, and put them to use at some point. So there you go, Becky. We're putting them to use. Okay, I can tell you now that that is really close to where I wanted it. Might be just a hair. Um.
my mom really doesn't need her bread near as much as she used to, but she's 86 years old. And, but you know what? It just turns out perfect anyway. So the kneading process is very important if you want to get a really nice loaf of bread. But, and I'll tell you what, that is nowhere near far enough yet. And mom sometimes isn't even mixed up that much. And you don't hear anybody complaining. And that feels really good. I mean, it's got just the right amount of moisture. You can see it's, it's just, it's not really sticky, but it's damp. That's plenty. I'll tell you what, for me, just being here by myself, my daughter does live here now, but yet she's got to work this evening, so I'm sure she'll have a little bit of that. There we go. There's a nice loaf of bread. I'm going to just, I'm going to bake this as a hearth loaf, so being that it's, let's put it in this one because it's going to double, at least double in size. So. that in there okay now we're just gonna leave it alone um, for as long as it needs and giving the temperature today given that I have a fire burning um, I'm gonna say two or three or four hours so I'll just check back every once in a while to see when it's about ready and as soon as it's ready I will okay. get her baked um, the bread's been raising for just a couple hours, but I think it's it's plenty enough that I can go ahead and get it baked. Uh, again, it's just going to be a small loaf, and I've decided to go ahead and cook it in the the wood fired cook stove. So, so I've got a nice wood fire burning. Um, I've had it burning for a little while. I'm holding right at I'm holding right at 350 degrees. I've got a damper there that controls the flue temperature. So, I'm going to go ahead and close that down a little bit so that it kind of holds that 350 um, for about an hour. So if you chose to and you wanted to bake something like this in a conventional oven, 350, this is a little bit of a smaller loaf, so probably 45 minutes at 350 um, would be plenty. Um, so that's kind of what I'll watch it in there. Um, an hour is typically what you shoot for, 50 minutes to an hour. It's been laying with just a towel over it, so there should be a little bit of a skim on there. It really shouldn't want to stick to this much, but just to be safe. Mm, that smells so good. I just like to typically cross score it and then give it a score right along the edge of the bottom. But you can, there's all kinds of different cuts you can do. Again, 350 for just less than okay. an hour. Okay, temperature wise, I'm holding pretty good. I might actually be a little bit too warm. Um, I'm holding 300, 350 right there. I'm starting to brown really nice on this side. I'm gonna rotate it a little bit just to kind of get the other side to, because my fire's on one side, one side of this oven is definitely hotter than the other. So get it closed back up. All right. Don't that look delicious? All right, there you go. I tell you what, my whole house smells like just that perfect sourdough yeasty bread flavor, um, bread flavor smell anyway. Um, 
you're really supposed to let a loaf of bread cool for a little while before you cut it. Um, because if you cut it too soon, the steam comes rushing out and it, it tends to stale a little quicker if you cut it too soon. However, I love hot bread, so I'm gonna cut it. And I promised the dog I'd take her to grandma's house. Huh, Lavender? So let's do this so I can wrap this video up and take my pup to my mom's house. So as you can see, you can see where it tore open there um, from Ryzen. Let's just go ahead and, and it should have a nice hard crust. And again, it's that steam rushing out of there that you kind of want to try to avoid. Mm. but you really can't beat fresh steaming bread. That won't last long. They say, they say the crust is the best part of the bread. When they say that, this is what they're talking about. There's three different layers, three different colors, and each of those different layers have a different flavor. So that crust really does have an amazing flavor, which is not really, when you think of bread from the store today, it's not that crust that has a good flavor. It's this crust from the sourdough cooked on a wood-fired oven um, where you get a higher temperature. Anyway, thanks for coming along. Um, I'm sure glad to be feeling better and back behind the camera again. Um, last few weeks have been brutal to say the least. So I will catch you on the next episode. Not sure what it'll be. It just depends on what comes to me at that very moment. So we'll see you next time.